So the first few Spider-Man games that we've looked at in this marathon all sort of stuck to a formula. Well, after a while, I guess Treyarch decided that it was time to break that. And guys, this, this is the big one. It's not because it's long or overly complicated or anything. Actually, what's so big about it is the impact that it had. And the impact that it had was all due to the simplicity of it. So, what's one of the most compelling aspects of Spider-Man? Like, if you got to be Spider-Man for a day, what would you look forward to the most? Well, if you're like most people, you'd probably answer by saying the web swinging. Spider-Man's main mode of transportation and one of the most iconic images of the character is his ability to swing through the city on his strands of web. It looks great on the comic book page and it looks great on the silver screen. It's surprising then that it hasn't gotten a whole lot of attention in the game so far. It's been there, but only just. It's either not that important to the gameplay or doesn't have a whole lot of thought put into it, but with a new Spider-Man movie just around the corner, it seemed that Treyarch thought it was finally time to give web swinging its due justice. And they did exactly that. As a matter of fact, web swinging is kind of the focus of Spider-Man 2. I'm not kidding, the entire game is built around this one mechanic. While past games led the player through a linear set of levels, Spider-Man 2 seems more keen on just kind of dropping the player off into New York City and letting them go wild. Actually, when you start the game up, there's not even any story at first. It just shows you a cutscene of the playground that you're going to be messing around in and then gets right to the mechanics. The actor Bruce Campbell, who played Ash in the Evil Dead series, acts as the narrator and tutorial guide for the game. I'm assuming because of his connections to Sam Raimi and just how good of buddies they seem to be, it was all the incentive he needed to make a little cameo into this game. Actually, he was in the last game too, doing the same job, it's just, in the first movie game, all of the tutorials and stuff of that nature was actually optional. So if you didn't really care about any of the tutorials in the first game, then he was pretty easy to miss. But in this game, you get to hear him no matter what, and he really does add quite a bit to the experience. Well, sequel time already, huh? Welcome back, I guess. I'm sure you miss me more than I miss you. Anyway, things have changed around here since last time, so they dragged me back at great expense to explain what's up. Now you might assume that learning the mechanics here is just like it has been before, but you might be surprised. Just about everything in Spider-Man's moveset has been tweaked to some degree. No doubt because he needs better mobility when moving around an open world city than, say, small enclosed levels. You can run like before, but there's actually also a sprint button to help you move faster. It actually increases your speed in just about everything you're doing. It can also be used when jumping. You see, by holding down the jump button, you can actually charge the jump. When you let it go, depending on how long you let it charge, you'll jump higher when standing still, or you'll jump further if you're sprinting. Even wall crawling got a little bit of a tweak. In prior games, you would just have to walk up to a wall and you would just sort of stick to it, but in this game, there's actually a button that you press when you want to hang onto a surface. And then finally, the main event, web swinging. Once you're in the air, you just gotta pull the right trigger button and Spider-Man shoots a web out. Now, the webs can't just stick onto thin air like they did before. You need to make sure that you're below the top of a building or structure in order for the webs to stick. Your webs have to be able to stick to something, otherwise... Now this already helps out with the realism aspect of web swinging, but what really sells it is that everything is dependent on physics. What do I mean by that? Your speed, trajectory, distance, and which way you're facing at any given point all matter. You're given total control here. If you hold down the sprint button while you're swinging, you'll move faster, obviously. But depending on where in the swing's arc you decide to speed up, it can change whether you're gonna be moving further or higher when you let go. The system isn't exactly perfect. I do find that it's a little too easy to go careening off into buildings sometimes, but if you take the time to really get in tune with the controls, you're gonna be pulling off some pretty fancy looking stuff. If you wanna get even fancier, you can actually purchase air tricks. Just tiny little maneuvers that you can pull off by pushing the jump button after you release a web. You can also unlock speed upgrades to your web swinging, which leads us into the sort of currency of the game, hero points. As the name might suggest, you earn hero points by performing heroic acts. Which, yeah, you wouldn't really be much of a superhero if you weren't helping some people out, right? The citizens of New York City will have little tasks for you to complete. Sometimes it'll be these little side missions that you can choose whether or not you actually want to accept. This can range from stopping car robbers to getting ambushed by thugs. But all around the city, sometimes crimes will just sort of happen. Maybe a woman's purse is getting stolen. Maybe somebody's falling from a ledge. Or maybe you need to rush someone to the hospital really quick. And the most serious of all, Now you can go out of your way and be a good person or something and get it back for them, or you could be me and just pop it. 
Yeah, you just think about that the next time you want to waste a superhero's time with your irresponsibility. You can also earn hero points by going to the Daily Bugle and getting photo ops, or by going to the other place that Peter works at. Funny, I can't quite remember what it was. You ready, Spider-Man? Absolutely. Where's your aux cord? That's right. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it begins. I think you mean... <laughs> Um, you want? I don't know. You want pizza, right? Yeah. Pizza time. Okay, so Spider-Man delivering pizzas. Peter has a limited amount of time to deliver pizzas, and Wells web swinging kind of is the fastest way to get around New York, so here we are. By far, the greatest thing about this is the music. It just sounds so horrible, but so... So memorable. While hero points can be used to purchase upgrades, they're also the means of progressing the story. See, the entire game is split up into chapters rather than levels. At each chapter, you're given some sort of plot-based objective, and then you have to accumulate a certain number of hero points. After you complete the story mission for that chapter, you're basically just swinging around, being Spider-Man on patrol, stopping crime, and all that good stuff, until you've earned enough hero points to move on to the next chapter. And, oh, yeah, that that's right, there is a story in here somewhere, isn't there? This actually isn't going to take very long, because the story in this game is pretty simple. It follows the basic premise of the Spider-Man 2 film and that the entire world seems to have it out for Peter Parker. The poor guy is doing everything that he can to keep his life as Peter Parker afloat, but his life as Spider-Man seems to keep getting in the way. He's running late for class, but he might still make it. Oh no, wait, there's still Spider-Man work to be done. He really wants to try to develop his relationship with Mary Jane, but oh, he's gotta be a hero. Which leads into one of the main three plot lines. The first, which we were already talking about, leads into a theme of taking responsibility, kind of bleeding in from the last game. But Peter's plight is actually mirrored pretty well by Dr. Otto Octavius, a brilliant scientist who actually befriends Peter Parker earlier on in the game, but after an experiment goes awry and his wife is killed during the process, he comes to blame Spider-Man for the death of his wife, even though the poor guy was only trying to help, and the artificial intelligence and the mechanical arms that he was using in his experiment seem to get a little out of control and start taking over his mind. So, Octavius is pretty much from there on out, Dr. Octopus, or, you know, Doc Ock. Of course, he's not the only supervillain in the game. We also have Mysterio. This is actually one of my favorite elements of Spider-Man 2. Quentin Beck is a special effects artist who seems to think that Spider-Man is a fraud and wants to prove it to the public for recognition. He tries challenging Spider-Man one-on-one, -on -one, but of course the webhead gets the better of him. And then he switches to more drastic and goofy measures, donning the moniker of Mysterio. His costume looks great. I absolutely love it. Okay, I'll bite. How did the fishbowl get stuck on your head? He's got little hologram projections of himself popping up in different places. He even goes as far as to kind of take over the Statue of Liberty. Let me tell you though, when you actually have to confront the guy in person, it is an epic battle. You have trifled with my power for the last time. I will not hold back. Whoa, that was sick, dude. Speaking of fighting, actually, that's one mechanic we haven't really talked about so far. So combat in Spider-Man 2 is... Well, to be honest, it's kind of clumsy. I don't find that there's quite as many combos or anything to use as there were in the last game. And that might not be so bad, but there's not a whole lot of form or grace to any of Spider-Man's fighting in this game. To make matters worse, it seems like everybody in the game, Spider-Man included, seems to run on ragdoll physics. Getting knocked around a little too much just sends people absolutely flying. At times, it's hilarious. At other times, it's just distracting. An element about the combat that I do like is that now there's a defense option. When an enemy is about to attack you, you can tap the dodge button, and if you respond just after, you can counterattack. You can also use your webs to a very limited degree, and yeah, you can pull off some funny and sometimes really cool actions at times, but it does feel a little disappointing since webs were used a little better in previous games. Being able to grab enemies and take off with them is fun though. <laughs> So yeah, effective, but still a little underwhelming. If the encounters with enemies has anything going for it in this game, is that everything is snappy and to the point. 
This may not be art, but I like it. That isn't the case for everything. Remember how in the Spider-Man 2000 review, I mentioned how I really don't like character chasing sequences? Well, they're back in this game and alongside one of my least favorite characters. The third plot line in this game revolves around Black Cat. It's kind of hard to place whether she's trying to be a criminal or a hero at times, and she seems to be this sort of temptress character that's trying to lead Spider-Man astray. Not intentionally, mind you. She just has different priorities and a much different moral outlook on the world. You can tell that she really likes Spidey and wants to pursue some kind of relationship with him. I do like two things about this idea. One, she's a good contrast to Mary Jane. The black cat sequences usually show up in the story after Mary Jane appears. Mary Jane in this game is kind of cold towards Peter, partly because she seems to think that he's ignoring her. Of course, not knowing he's Spider-Man probably lends to that. Black Cat, on the other hand, is a lot more easygoing. What I like about this is that it makes Spider-Man question his responsibility. It makes him reflect on the lifestyle that he's chosen. What I don't like about this is how much of the game is spent chasing Black Cat around. The first encounter with her is the most annoying. See, look, I can catch up to her so easily, but I can't just stop her? Why? It gets a little better when she's actually trying to lead you to a location so you have to follow her, but it loops right back to being annoying when later on in the game, the last encounter that you have with Black Cat is the two of you racing. You don't have to go any specific route, you just have to get from point A to point B as fast as you can using your tactics and maneuvers. That, to me, is fun. The other way of doing character chases? Not so much. So yeah, character races? Good. Character chases? Bad. Don't like it. There is this fun little subplot about how Black Cat is trying to help you take down the Shocker, who actually escaped prison due to Quentin Beck's shenanigans. And I mean, maybe Black Cat isn't so bad in this game. I mentioned that she's one of my least favorite characters, but admittedly, that has more to do with how she's handled in later games and material than in this one. I think she's fine here, I just think they could have done a little more with her, and maybe a little less of the chasing. Alright, I'm sorry, I'm done harping on that for now. So, after doing your job around the city, encountering Doc Ock a few times, but never quite stopping him, knocking out Mysterio, and putting Shocker's lights out with the help of Black Cat, Spider-Man's reminded of why he chose to be Spider-Man, and now he's harder set in his ways. He tells Black Cat that he just doesn't think there can be a relationship there. Their priorities and responsibilities are just too different. The two agree to remain friends, but she doesn't really show up again. All that's left is a final confrontation with Doc Ock. Although, he actually kind of finds you. Octavius was actually in a partnership with Harry Osborn when working on his experiment. Wanting to try his experiment again to prove himself to the world, Octavius confronts Harry and demands that he's given the resources that he needs to try again. Now, the only reason that Harry agrees is because, well, he hates Spider-Man. He's under the belief that Spider-Man killed his father, which, I mean, he more kind of killed himself, let's be real. Oh. Harry makes a deal with Octavius. He'll give Octavius the tritium that he needs if Doc Ock can bring him Spider-Man. Hearing that Peter Parker is the famed photographer that gets all the best pictures of Spider-Man, he confronts our hero and demands that Peter find Spider-Man and tell him that it's time to settle the score. As a final piece of incentive, Octavius grabs Mary Jane and takes off. The webhead goes to see the doctor for a checkup and the operation goes poorly, and Spider-Man is knocked unconscious and left for Harry Osborn to kill. Harry unmasks the hero and is horrified to see that his best friend was Spider-Man the whole time. Shocked and unsure of what to do, Harry lets Spider-Man get away for now, and the wall crawler goes to save the city from Doc Ock. And I hate this boss fight so much. Ragdoll physics in full force here. Earlier in the game, you have to stop Octavius' experiment once it goes haywire. It was annoying enough then, what with the shock waves sending you flying every which way direction and the lightning bolts just striking you down like the wrath of God. But now, you have to worry about that, there's water that you you can't let yourself fall into, and you've got a crazy lunatic octopus scientist chasing after you the entire time. Once you shut the second experiment down, you find out that the thing is self-sustaining, and now your best bet is to try to knock some sense back into Octavius. This boss fight drags. I can't be the only one that dies really easily in this boss fight, right? I mean, come on, it can't just be me. I also don't think that the fight here is all that interesting. You just kind of lure him into one spot, and then you have to dodge his tentacles, web them up, and then punch his face for a few seconds until he gets back up and then, you know, rinse and repeat. Eventually, Octavius comes to his senses and sees what he's done. Filled with regret, he releases Mary Jane and goes forward to destroy his experiment while Spidey and the girl escape. Mary Jane now knows Peter's big secret and decides that she still wants to start a life with him. The game ends with the day saved, the hero getting the girl, and one last swing for the road. This is one of the simpler stories that we've seen so far, but I actually think that it works well enough. The main focus of this game, again, was showing off the new web-swinging mechanic. 
but because it had some good material to work with from the movie, there's still some arcs here, some good character searching, you know, that kind of stuff. It recreates some of the best set pieces from the film, and creates some great ones of its own, and overall has a pretty upbeat attitude. The way it's presented can be kind of hit or miss though. Now I'm not sure if it was because of the time period and they were working with a new engine and maybe the hardware wasn't quite there yet, but it seems like so much time went into creating the web swing mechanics and getting all of the open world city stuff to work that a lot of the visuals kind of got pushed to the wayside. Now again, part of this might have just been hardware limitations, like maybe they couldn't get a great open world city going and have good looking character models and textures like from the first game. But man does this stuff look goofy sometimes. Now what's really weird is when the pre-rendered cutscenes come in. There aren't many of them, but when they do show up, the quality is so much higher from the presentation of the rest of the game that it's just, I don't know, it's just strange. Like look at this. What? Get out of here you maniac! And then look at this. Harry! About time you got here. Otto's a busy man, and I don't want to keep him waiting. Sorry, Harry. Things fare a little better in the audio department. The voice cast is all great, and I actually think Tubby Maguire puts in a better performance this time than he did in the first game. I don't know, he just seems more comfortable this time. And as for you, Beck, stick with the movies. It's obvious reality is way too much for you to handle. The music is good too, but... I don't know, maybe it's my nostalgia talking, but I just think the music from the first game was a bit better. Now it's not bad here, don't get me wrong, but sometimes when I was swinging around the city, I really missed that bombastic score from the first game. So, do I recommend Spider-Man 2? Oh yeah. What this game did for Spider-Man in the game industry is undeniable. The open world web swinging idea was a stroke of genius and there's a reason that it's still around today. I disagree with a lot of people who tend to say that web swinging is the only thing that matters in a Spider-Man game, but I mean it is still really important. It's arguably the most iconic ability of the character, and I just can't think of any other character you could do something like that with. It's not flawless here, but considering it was the first time it was attempted, at least to my knowledge, the results are outstanding. Spider-Man 2 is a fun, memorable, and engaging piece of gaming history. It's not my personal favorite Spider-Man game, as I do think other games in the series later have handled some of the material a bit better, but I would be hard pressed to say it's not one of the best. So if you haven't already gotten a chance to play Spider-Man 2, I suggest that you hunt down a copy and give it a swing. So that was it. Spider-Man 2 set the new standard for Spider-Man games, which you might think that Treyarch would play it safe in the next entry, but they did a little more than you might think. So, in the next video, we're going to take a look at Ultimate Spider-Man for the PlayStation 2. Thanks for joining me in this episode, ladies and gentlemen. See you next mission. Before I sign off today, I'd like to give a couple of shout-outs. First of all, to my friend Marie. She drew this outstanding picture of me in the Alex Ross Spider-Man costume, and I absolutely love it. Be sure to follow her on social media. Check out some more of her work. And if you want to see another great video about Spider-Man 2, check out Do You Remember Spider-Man 2 by Super Butterbuns. She's an absolutely hilarious YouTube creator, and I recommend that you give some of her stuff a look.